Hola, buenas noches. Hello and good evening. My name is Abby Torres. I am a first grade Spanish immersion teacher. We are currently transitioning into dual language and that is occurring in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Tonight, I'll be sharing with you engaging and empowering elementary learners with Wixi. It will be focusing on four key components, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. So before we get started, I thought I'd share with you, teacher stress got me like, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure we're all in the same boat the last few years. And it's definitely been challenging. And so I just wanted to show you something to make you smile. And I hope that the same thing occurs tonight, that you leave here smiling and encouraged. And I also wanted to say to you, if you haven't heard it yet today, you are important, you are valued, and you are valuable. I think we need to hear it as much as possible. And so if we can encourage each other, which I love that Wixie does these webinars so we can encourage each other, but I just want to let you know what you do every single day is important and you are appreciated. So let's just take a breath and get ready. And I hope that tonight you are encouraged and some new ideas are brought to your attention that get you excited about using them in the classroom. So a little bit about me, you'll see my Bitmoji there. Again, we know the last few years, there has been a lot of online learning. And so this is my Bitmoji. I told my, my children that if I could have my hair any color, I would choose purple. <laughs> so that's why I have purple. I also like to do fist bumps, obviously, with um, some of the health scenarios that were going around the last couple of years. Couldn't really do too much hands-on or hugging, but um, fist bumps or air high fives were a big thing. So a little bit about me is that I have taught K through five. So what I bring to you tonight, I also think can be applied not just to the younger learners, but to some of the older children as well. With that being said, I have 20 years of experience. So I have tested and approved a lot of these strategies. The last three years, I have been involved with using Wixie and I love Wixie. Currently, I'm teaching first grade and that's when I've been using Wixie is with my first graders, math and science, and it's been in Spanish. So I'll also show you some of the projects that I've used that are math and science related, but in Spanish. Now you may wonder about my cat in the corner. So this is a picture I took off of Wixie, uh, but it looks just like my cat. So my daughter um, decided to name our cat Cookie Dough because she thought she looks like a cat. And you say, well, Abby, how does this apply? Well, first of all, there are tons of pictures that can apply to your life in Wixie. One of the reasons I love Wixie so much, but also you might be saying, wow, Abby, your backdrop looks like you're at school and it's Eastern Standard Time. It's 8 o'clock p.m. <laughs> well, during virtual, my cat Cookie Dough was very involved in some of our synchronous learning and even some of the asynchronous. Anytime I seemed to have my computer up, she always wanted to be in the spotlight. <laughs> my my classmates, uh, my children at school got very um very attached to cookie dough and all the time she'd make her appearance. So I didn't want her to make an appearance tonight, but she has on my screen, but that's it. So here we go. One of the first components that I had listed is critical thinking. So under critical thinking, there are three little pieces I believe that apply. That would be think and apply, differentiate, double dip, dash, scaffold. So here under critical thinking is one example. And again, all the examples I'll show you tonight are some that I've used with my first graders. So since I teach math and science in Spanish, we have a lot of what we call exemplars. So they're essentially real world situations and the children need to use their mathematical strategies and apply it to whatever the situation happens to be. So for critical thinking, this is an open-ended problem that's asking about Farmer Brown You'll see here the top is in English and the bottom I've put in Spanish. And so with, with this project, the children were given this and then they had to answer. 
So all these pictures that you see on here, the vacas on the side, cerdos, and the ovejas, they all came from Wixie, from pictures in Wixie. And the thing I love is that the children are able to create their own. We as teachers need to save as much time and utilize our time like none other. And so with Wixie, I don't need to put all the pictures on there. Now I did put this little oveja just because I thought it was cute. But when the children answer the questions, I don't need to load up Wixie with all these pictures, with all these images. Instead, the children have autonomy and they can go in and pick the pictures that will be appropriate for that activity. Now, one of the things that you might be wondering is, well, Abby, do they spend like all their time just looking for different kind of cows? Well, I want a black and white cow or brown cow. And to be honest with you, in the beginning, and now again, remember, this is first grade, in the beginning, they are in awe of all the things Wixie has to offer. But like any good teacher, as long as you scaffold it, then it will be okay. They won't spend hours and hours searching for all the different kind of pigs, pigs in mud and pigs not. So just know that as long as you scaffold it in the beginning and you give them time to browse and be creative, that when it's time for a project like this, they really will focus. And I promise you, I have seen it, like I said, for three years. And when we introduce Wixie at the beginning of the year, it is that we do allow for time for them to look and search. But when it comes to project time, they really are very good about picking out the, the pictures and applying it. So back to this project, the child here, she picked out her cows, her um, pigs and her sheep. And then I love that she labeled it. And then you'll see up here a word problem or a number model, I'm sorry, that she wrote that applies along and accurately solves the problem with her picture. She also is a little creative and she put the answer, I don't know if you see, down at the bottom, but upside down because she didn't want anyone to find it just so easily. So the kids get really great at manipulating the text box, um, the drawing tools and the pictures. There is um, another thing I wanted to bring up is about the think and apply. So when you have a problem like this that's open-ended and you might have those early finishers and they say, well, I'm all done, I finished. The great thing about this project and Wixie is that you can add another page. So instead of this child saying, I'm done, I'm done, they can go ahead and you say, can you think of another way to solve the problem? And they can just add on another page and now they're still doing that think and apply under critical thinking just at their level that they need to. Under critical thinking, think and apply, you'll see two pictures of projects that my students did, and they are both for science, basically looking at habitats, so habitats. And so they, this one on the left, um, that was one where Charlie and Everly worked together as a team. And the one on the right was just my friend Eli working independently. And I laugh because I didn't even know Wixie had a gumball machine, but evidently they do. Um, and so with both of those projects, the children were able to find a background and then they were able to add any pictures that they thought were appropriate. Now, again, think and apply. There is a feature where they can type in or write what would go along with the picture. So in this one on the right, we were talking about reducir, reutilizar, y reciclar. So the three R's. And my friend did a picture of sea trouble. Since we're here in Virginia Beach, he wanted to talk about all the pollution in the ocean. So he didn't type on this one. And then you might have those children that then need their notebook. So he has the picture, but then he can write in his notebook if he prefers. So you're also stretching that thinking. So there's the picture and then his description, critical thinking after it. This is a blank page because you just saw some really great projects already, but I wanted to show you how easy it can be. So one of our first units that we talk about is habitats, is habitats. And so with that, the children were allowed to explore and create habitats. So I wanna show you how simple it can be. If you click up here on page picture, there is already a folder that says habitats. If you click on it, you'll see that there are a whole bunch of choices. This one you'll see later on, the forest one. You might say, well, Abby, I think some kids like a little more realistic more like a picture. 
there's also this folder that is called landscapes. And you click on this one and you'll see the one that I just showed you right here. And so there it is for you. And there are plenty, plenty more to choose from. But if you wanted to, you could also type in and you'll see that I've typed in here, ocean waves. And I'm gonna click enter and up couple, a whole bunch more choices. You also have my files, which if you wanted to insert something, you could, but in first grade, not really. Fifth graders, fourth graders, definitely you could probably have them take pictures of that were their own, or you could have them upload pictures from the internet. I'm looking for my favorite one right here that reminds me of us here at Virginia Beach and also not to be crabby, right? To be happy. And so this was simple and easy. And now I have a landscape that I'm ready to describe. And then you can go ahead and easily by clicking on the plus sign over here, you can add other pictures or other text features. Critical thinking, differentiation. We know that's a big buzzword when we're talking about meeting the needs of our children, especially again, when we've seen a little bit of this difference or maybe sometimes a bigger difference between our high and our low babies, what they need. And so if you take a look, it is essentially the same project on Wixie that I have, but they're differentiated a little bit. So it's been essentially scaffolded. So on here, this one is the kids need to make and show a combination of coins to 25 cents. So they need to show it two different ways. A little bit harder for those ones that are ready, their choice is 50 cents and they need to show it two different ways. Over here, I've now added a quarter, which was very simple to do, and I've changed the amount. So it's the same standard that I'm teaching, but I'm making sure I'm meeting the needs of all the children where they're at. And that, just so you know, is something that Wixie is super easy to do with. It is so super easy to make one project and then make duplicates of it so that you can have bunches of projects, but you haven't worked so hard. Again, that time, that key piece of making your time efficient, but also meeting all the needs of your kids is something that Wixie does so well. I am going to show you another one and then I'll show you how easy it's to do on muffins. Same idea, three projects, all the same, but they're slightly different. So it's the double dip, the scaffold. I've got counting to six, counting to eight and counting to nine. I meet the needs of those high kids that maybe they've shown me in centers that they're able to do their fluency facts efficiently, accurately, and consistently to nine. So they can go right up to the nine. Whereas some of my younger friends that need help, they start at six. Well, guess what? I don't have to recreate anything. I can just then use the one for eight. And then when they're ready, the one for nine. So I'm using those same tools. I don't have to make something new. I just decide when they're ready to use it. So let's take a look at this idea of double dipping, whether it be for the fluency or for the muffin example. So here you'll see I left a lot of my folders out and a lot of my projects so I could get to it easily. So I'm going to just go right over here and show you how easy it was for me to make those scaffold projects or like I said on there to double dip. So I just go to the three dots, literally go to the button that says duplicate. And now it says copy five because I've copied it a lot of times practicing for this, <laughs> for this um, presentation. I'm just gonna click on it and I open it up and here you are. So here I have my different choices of coins, but maybe my friends that were in the middle needed another practice, but they're not ready for coins. So I'm gonna delete that. I go up here. All I have to do is I'm going to move this over and now voila, I've made another project in under what, 15, 20 seconds. Now it's something else that I can use and my children will be comfortable with the format, which also seems to be the issue. Sometimes they'll be comfortable with the format and then they'll be able to show me that they can solve what they need to or practice what they need to. I love that idea of having them all readily available and you can just give the kids what they need when they need it. The next component is communication. On here, you'll see the same, the same um, exemplar. It's called Buttons for Snowmen. And again, we're working on those fluency and understanding. And so there's two different examples that I want to show you. 
This one is done with the drawing tools. And so it's asking the children if they counted buttons for eyes and nose, how many buttons would there be for three snowmen? And so this child on the left decided they wanted to draw the snowman. And just so you know, when I talk to the kids, I say to them, I say, I'm not worried about you drawing a Mona Lisa. I just want you to do your best to show what you can. And so they did. They drew their three snowman, snowmen, and then they found some buttons for the eyes with the Wixi feature of inserting that. They also have their number model. And down below, you'll see this little button right here with the speaker box. And that child was able to communicate to me how they solved the problem, what they did, and what their number model is. And so that is one of the great things about Wixie is the communication piece. So many times our kids, I know at least with the younger ones, they want to talk to us and they want to tell us everything that happened in their day. They want to tell us everything that happened on the weekend. And so here is a chance for them to get to communicate with us on their own time. And so they can talk and talk and talk. And it also allows us to then be able to get that one-on-one -on -one information about every single child based on if they're understanding the standard or not. And so it is a really key part for them to be able to communicate with us. Now, another feature that I love about Wixi is on here, you'll see this one, this example looks a little different. There's a picture there. So just like my picture of cookie dough, the kids can also put pictures of themselves. But this isn't just a picture. So if I click on this box, you'll notice over here on the right comes up a little link. Another thing I love about Wixie is that you can also have the, the images linked to a link. So I'm going to click this button. And here comes my one friend. So you notice he doesn't have those pictures of snowmen. Here's a friend, that, and you might have some in your class, that have concerns with fine motor. And so he had a really tough time making sure that he could click and drag and draw. And so making sure that he understands the standard and he feels successful in class, he decided that he was going to draw in his notebook. So he's still showing that he understands the same standard, but he's doing it a little bit differently. So I love how Wixie has that flexibility. He's still able to communicate to me, but he's doing it in a way that works for him and makes him feel successful. So if I, I'm just gonna play this a little bit for you and you'll hear me a little bit in there encouraging him to speak Spanish. So I'm gonna show you how my friend right here was able to make a video and explain to me and demonstrate that he understood this problem too, even though he didn't draw on Wixie. I made three snowmen and I was counting the buttons for the eyes and the nose. And so three plus three plus three equals nine. Love it. Six plus six plus six is equal to nine. And he did a great job. And you'll see he even paused it. So a really great feature for Wixie is allowing them to have the video. Again, it's that autonomy that he can communicate with me and let me know that he understands. And since we're talking about language, he's also able to show me that he understands and he can speak it in Spanish. And so whether it's French or Spanish, any language that you have, it's so important that we're able to listen to them practice speaking and that we can give feedback. That is so important for them, whether it's the language or sometimes it might even be vocabulary. Maybe for that week, you have specific vocabulary that you want them to focus on. Here in Virginia, the state testing is called SOLs. I know in Pennsylvania, it's the PSSAs. Maybe you want them to practice that vocabulary. So for third, fourth, and fifth, they have a list of vocabulary. You want to make sure they know. That would be a perfect way to tie that in is by putting that available somewhere and allowing them to show you and communicate that they know what those words are and what they mean. Here's another example of a project I had on Wixie. Same idea, simple, I have it in Spanish right here, and then part in English and part in Spanish. And so easily enough, it's you can just have it posted for them, they can read. If you have children that need it in a different language, then you can have that available to them as well. You can have it in a available to them in a different language. I'm going to click on this one and you'll see over here on the side, the link comes up. 
and I'll just show you. This was a sort for telling time. Again, I wanted to make sure they could tell me in Spanish the time. And down here, you'll see that little button that I was talking to you about where my friend was able to record. So she didn't do a video. She, instead, she did a recording. And she did a great job sharing that with me. One thing while we're on this page that I want to show you. So communication goes two ways, right? So we've, I've been talking to you a lot about communication of the children to the teacher, but I also want to impart on you communication back from the teacher to the student. So over here on the bottom, if you look on the bottom right, it says instructions play using text to speech. You can also record your instructions. So you might have some children in your room that have 504s or IEPs and their accommodation is instructions read aloud to them. This would be a perfect feature for you to make sure that you have available to your children. Also, it really helps them become independent and advocate for themselves. They can try to read it. Obviously, the older kids should be able to read. Your babies are going to need to be able to hear it. Um, but those ones that are working on reading, they can read it. Then they can listen to it so that they can make sure they can listen and read. So I love this feature down here of allowing you to have the instructions available for the, for the children to hear. Another key piece I love of communication on the teacher's part is right here. So this is another project that I had the children do. It's a sorting. So it's pesado y liviano, heavy and light. And they had to do a sort. And then they were supposed to record and use the words and use any phrases that they could to share with me that they understood the concept of light and heavy. Over here, there's this feature. If you see the arrow from the top right, complete. This is a great feature, so if students are working, they can click on it. That will communicate to you that they feel they're confident that they're able to turn it in and ready for it to be looked at. So they're communicating to you. Now, like I said, my communication piece is right here. You'll see my name, Abby Torres, and I wrote Excelente. And this will post, it will come up, it be posted, so that the child can see that I've looked at their project and I've written something to them. The older grades, you can be a little more explicit for the younger kids. If there was something that was incorrect, I might tell them. And then if you see this plus that's underlined, then I would write another one, say they fixed it. Then I could write another comment. And they would know because it will be chronological. If you see the top underlined part, that's the date, and then the next one will come. So I think this is a great feature to give that feedback to children. Another feature that isn't on here, but just to throw in some of that 20 years of experience, is when you're using these projects, I always ask for some voluntarios at the end, kind of like to check in, did we get the learning objective? Did we get the target for today? And so with that, I would ask for volunteers, voluntarios, and then I would post up, put up their project, and we would do what we call the three Ps. So a praise, algo positivo, something positive, and say, you know, I like how you sorted, and there's space in between your projects, or you wrote neatly, or you were creative with lots of color. Then we also can do a push, right? Empujar, something that you think maybe they could do a little bit better. So maybe instead of just saying the couple words, maybe they could say a whole sentence. Um, and so these are just encouraging words to have them strive to do something even more a little creative or explain a little bit more, that communication piece also tying it in. And the last of the three Ps is a pregunta, a question. So you might ask them, why did you choose to have a gumball machine in your with your sea turtles? Or why did you choose sea turtles? Or what made you pick this? So just something to, to throw in there. And it really makes the kids reflect and be more engaged with their projects and proud of their projects. They're encouraging each other. It's a great time to lift each other up. That communication piece comes in when they're lifting each other each other up as well. Collaboration. So collaboration, here you have two pictures and you'll see that one, back, that one background that I had shown you earlier. And here for collaboration, 
In one of our science units, the children are allowed to pick an animal that they would like to research and do a project about. So when they pick their animal, then they're allowed to match up with another student that had that same animal. And so they are allowed to do their project with a partner in class. And so both of these projects were done together in combination with some other child. We say, how is that possible? Here's another one. There's this little feature down at the bottom and it's the team feature. And so if you were to click on that, it allows the student to find a teammate that they are going to work with. It can be one, it can be two, it can be three. It can be as many children as they want to collaborate on it. So this is one that one of the students did when we were learning about springtime. And so here's the picture and they threw in some other pictures they had. Now you say collaboration. You're talking about teams. What does that mean? So over here are some of my students and I would get to see if they're teamed or not with a person that's listed up above. Now, say you have an issue and a couple of the students aren't getting along, they're not getting their work done. Over here is where you as an adult, as the teacher can go ahead and say, I'm going to click on this and remove that student from the group. So you have the ultimate control over seeing if the teams do work or not. And I'm going to tell you the kids love being in teams. They absolutely love it. And so that's a fun collaborative way for them to work together, to communicate and show off what they know. And it's very simple, easy for you to manage. I promise you. Creativity. As you've seen, there's lots of ways to, for the children to be creative in Wixie. This is just one of the ways. So I know I've talked a lot about math and science, but I pulled in one of the language arts that my one of my children did. And it says, one day Fox met a whale shark. Hi, Fox said. Hi, said the whale shark. They became friends. Now, I know it's very simple, but they were able to create their own story that they wanted to. And there is so much creativity in Wixie, whether they're writing, reading, recording, creating these wonderful pictures with the younger kids. One of their standards is to have the setting and make sure it matches the story. So there are so many ways for them to be creative. I just love that about Wixie. So here we are at the end of the presentation and takeaways. I really hope that tonight you've been encouraged, you've been inspired, and you realize that Wixie projects are easy, manageable, definitely manageable, and fun. Ways to incorporate the four C's in your lessons. And I want you to know that you can do it no matter the grade and no matter the language. And now, since we're at the end of the presentation, we can pause or stop for questions. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. And